Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. HOA bullies vandalized my mailbox and bashed it to pieces for refusing to buy a $500 mailbox. I live in an HOA neighborhood. I have never really had a problem with the HOA management, I am retired, so what else am I going to do besides upgrade my house and keep it maintained? The only difference is that I just made sure it was aligned with the HOA standards. Last year, I had decided to upgrade my mailbox. The design was one approved by the HOA beforehand, except I got the upgraded version. I am not sure how much of an upgrade it really was, considering it was only $40, but it did its job, and that was good enough for me. After all, does it really matter what your mailbox looks like? It was only supposed to hold mail. Well, it did matter. Just two months after I got the mailbox, the HOA board members voted on a new mailbox that was white and had a W on it. The W was supposed to stand for the golf course that we lived by, as we were considered a golfing community. I thought that this was absolutely ridiculous, especially since the new design cost $500. We lived in pretty nice community. Most of us were well above middle class. However, who in their right mind would spend $500 on a mailbox? It turns out that I was not the only one who did not like this, as many residents began to complain to the HOA. So many people were complaining in fact, that the HOA decided to have a meeting about it. My neighbor had said she had also just replaced her mailbox with a new $100 dollar once, because her old one was starting to crack in the wood. She was upset that she would have to spend another $500 or keep paying fees for her new mailbox not being up to standards. Well, the meeting did not go to well. I do not like to speak with profanity, but one of the board members was an absolutely asshole. I had spoken up about the fact that this new design was $500, which was absolutely absurd for a mailbox. If this was something that had to do with the houses themselves, such as painting or roofing, I might be able to understand. But $500 for a mailbox was just not plausible, even for those of us in retirement. The response I got from one particular board member was, most of you have retirement money. What's the problem? The problem is most people have more important things that $500 could go to. Not only was this statement extremely rude, but the board member was being ageist. When confronted with another complaint by another resident, the HOA president himself responds, there's nothing that we can do about it. We already approved this design. Well, yes, there is something that you can do about it. How about not approve such a ridiculously priced design in the first place? Not only that, but the board members and president have the authority to go back and vote again on a different design. For people that sure loved their power, they were not using it very smart. Well, about a week later, I had decided to do some early morning grocery shopping. Keep in mind that both my wife and I are retired, so we do not get out of the house as much as we used to. We enjoyed spending our free time being cozy and comfortable in our home. I left early, around 7 am in the morning. I returned about an hour later, and I was surprised to find that my mailbox had not only been spray painted, but that it had been completely smashed to the ground and was separated from the post. I had no idea who would do this. I was terribly upset, and I did not even know where to begin when it came to figuring out who did this and why they would do it. My wife was home, but she did not hear anything because she was in the shower in the far side of the house. Well, luckily for me, my neighbor across the street did hear something. About an hour or two later, she came knocking on my door, holding her phone up to me. She had one of those security camera systems that you could link to an app on your phone, and one of them was pointed outwards towards her front yard and driveway. You could see my front yard in the shot as well. As she played the footage, I saw someone pull up in a car, only to get out and spray paint black all over my wooden mailbox. After they spray painted it, they had reached into the front seat of their car and pulled out a baseball bat smashing the mailbox to the ground. Upon further investigation of the video, it looked like it was that one board member who was rude to me during the meeting. My neighbor suggested we take this straight to the police, rather than filing a report with the HOA. Bless my neighbor for helping us as well. 
I am just an old fart, but I was totally lost on what to do and how I could prove it was this HOA board member. Luckily for me, the police and my neighbor were a great help. I also knew some good lawyers, and that ended up helping me out a lot too. Well, the police were able to match the license plate in the video to the board member's car. After months of investigation and trial, he was found guilt on a felony charge. Mailboxes are taken pretty serious by the government. I should have put more thought into my mailbox, ha ha. Said board member was found guilty and sentenced to one year in prison. He also had to pay a fine of $130,000 for damaging the mailbox. I guess he will never vandalize again, who know vandalizing a mailbox could be a federal offense. Oh, and we are not longer an HOA community. After this, there was an investigation launched within the HOA regarding their board members. The HOA has completely disbanded. The next story is titled, I inherited a house and want to sell it but have been unable to do so due to a hoarding situation in the neighbor's backyard. Upstate NY, TLDR. I inherited a house that I'd like to sell but cannot find a buyer due to a serious hoarding situation in the neighbor's backyard. I have engaged two attorneys, multiple relevant municipal agencies and a few elected officials with no results. At this point I am looking for any guidance whatsoever, as I have absolutely no idea where to go from here and I am at my wit's end. I inherited my father's house in upstate NY last year. The neighbor is a hoarder and the situation extends to her backyard, which is completely covered in piles of all types of garbage. I had no idea about the hoarding till I hired a realtor to list the place for me. I lived several hours away when my father passed, we did not have a relationship for the last few years of his life, and he bought the house during that time. My realtor warned me that the neighbors will be an issue, but we put the property on the market anyway to test the water, as I would have been happy to sell for well below market if we found a buyer who was willing to try to deal with the problem themselves. I did not receive a single offer despite a strong seller's market and great traffic early on, and this is entirely due to the hoarding issue. This is not an assumption. Buyer's agents are asked to leave feedback after showing the house, and multiple realtors have specifically stated that their clients loved it and would have made an offer, the neighbor's backyard was a deal breaker. Paying rent on top of the expenses associated with owning the house was not sustainable for me on a long-term basis, so I wound up moving up here after the lease on my old apartment expired in May. The situation is only getting worse, so I wound up pulling the listing shortly after moving in. The neighbors were a mother and daughter when I inherited the property, but the mother passed away over the summer and the situation has become far worse since then. Originally it was mostly clean, garbage like old furniture, toys and appliances, but it has included more and more household trash since the mother died. My backyard is completely unusable due to the smell, and it is almost unbearable inside of my house on warm days. Various animals use the larger stuff for shelter, and I don't even want to think about what type of smaller pests have been attracted to the household waste. There is also a large pile of trash stacked up against our shared fence, which is starting to buckle from the weight in a few spots. I cannot get the fence repaired because the contractors would have to access the neighbor's side, which is impossible due to the trash. I am terrified of this eventually causing the fence to give in under the weight and cause a trash avalanche in my backyard. I've attempted to approach my neighbor, but she just straight up ignores me when I knock on the door or try to speak to her in person when our paths cross outside. I have reported the situation to the police, adult protective services, code enforcement and several other potentially relevant municipal agencies with no results. I have not been given specific details, but one of the people I dealt with implied that the situation is not as bad inside of the house itself, which apparently limits their ability to take any decisive action. I've had consultations with two real estate attorneys and neither was willing to work with me, essentially stating that they have to take a choose your battles approach and that my issue might not be worth fighting. I have also contacted several elected officials, but their responses have consisted entirely of meaningless platitudes. This is on a dead end street and my neighbor's house is the last one on the block, so I am the only person who is being directly impacted by the situation. I have spoken to a few other people on the block to see if anyone is willing to raise the issue with the town. At best they have been understanding of my frustration but didn't want to get involved, at worst they have chastised me for trying to impose my will on the hoarding neighbor. I am not unsympathetic to the fact that this is a product of serious mental illness, but the situation has been seriously affecting my mental health as well. 
All I want to do is sell this place and move back to the NYC area so I can get on with my life, but it feels like there is no end in sight. I would have considered disclaiming the inheritance if I had known what a fucking mess this would turn out to be despite the house being worth what would constitute a life-changing windfall for me. I honestly don't even know what specific questions to ask here. I am just looking for any advice that might help move things forward. Thanks for taking the time to read this and for any help you might be able to offer. Update. My original post didn't receive a lot of attention, but I was reminded of it this morning and a few people went out of their way to give me advice, so I figured I'd post an update. Most of the information about my neighbor is coming from a couple who lives up the block that stayed in touch with her family. First, I decided to accept the fact that I was stuck with a house I didn't want in an area that I didn't want to live in shortly after posting here. I won't say that I learned to ignore the neighbor's backyard, but it stopped bothering me quite as much and had practically slipped my mind altogether once winter had me staying indoors as much as possible. I started focusing on some household projects after the weather turned, which led to me sort of falling in love with the house. Then I got to know some of my neighbors and made some friends within an underground music scene that was a huge part of my life back home, which led to me sort of falling in love with the area. Then I met a woman and very much fell in love with her. Long story not so short, I decided to give suburban life a chance and it looks like I'm going to stick around. Some other aspects of my neighbor's mental health situation came to a head toward the end of winter. The details aren't mine to share, but it ended with her receiving inpatient treatment, then moving in with another family member who was willing to provide ongoing support. I'd love to say that the house had been cleaned up and fixed up so it'd be ready for her to move back in when she's ready to live independently, but unfortunately only the first half of that turned out to be the case. Either way, I'm glad she's getting help, and apparently she's been doing really well. There was a parade of cleaning companies and junk removal services setting up shop in the house and backyard for a while after she left. They were eventually replaced by a regular moving truck, then a for sale sign appeared in the front lawn. The sign was removed a couple of weeks ago, and I met my new neighbor this morning. Amusingly enough, he's around my age and moved here from NYC. I told him he's going to love the area. The next story is titled. Older lady tried to physically move me from motorized scooter. Okay so I believe this goes here. In 2020 right at a low point where I live with COVID I had foot and ankle surgery. I had my leg completely wrapped up in a medicine pump for the first three days. Anyways I, 23 female, went to Walmart with my mom because I wanted to get out of the house. I got one of those motorized scooter because I didn't feel like using my crutches all the way through the store. As I was waiting by the pharmacy an older lady stomped up to me and told me to get up. I was completely confused still high on pain meds from the pump. She told me again to get up, I told her I couldn't walk that I just had surgery. She said I didn't need the scooter that I needed to get up so she could have it. Normally I'd be all for it, I did it a lot near the end of recovery but I just had surgery three days prior and the basket was filled with stuff I needed. She literally grabbed my arm and started to scream at me to get my lazy ass up that I didn't need it that she needed it more ECT ECT. I finally screamed at her to get the duck off of me. Thankfully an employee was walking by at the time and asked what was going on. This lady tried to say I stole her scooter and I won't give it back to her. Once again thankfully the pharmacist that was just finished up with the person in front of me told the employee what was going on and the employee told the lady if she didn't leave me alone she would be asked to leave. Once again the lady screamed saying I was lying that I didn't need it, then as she was walking away she took my crutches and proceeded to throw them down the store telling me to get up and get them myself before walking away. Once again thankfully the employee got them for me and apologized for what happened and asked me if I wanted to call the cops and I said no. Yes I know I should've but at that point I just wanted to get my medicine and leave, I just so drained at that point. Since then I have not seen that lady at all and thank god. The last story is titled. How long can HOA take to make us live with hole in the ceiling? Following up on a previous thread on how we messed up in not identifying water damage that damaged the truss in our townhome. Our HOA last month told us they wanted to bring a structural engineer to further check damage. Unfortunately it's been over a month and no engineer has come by. How long can the HOA have us living with a hole in the ceiling and with one inoperable shower? Really considering just selling the home as an apartment would have had this problem solved much faster. We live in Northern Virginia. Update. We got an update, finally, this was her email response. 
The structural engineer agreed to squeeze us into his schedule during the first few weeks in July. He has committed to doing so. I plan to touch base with him tomorrow, July 1st, to see if he has a firm date yet. If he is able to provide that, I'll let you know ASAP. Otherwise, I'll be in touch with him, and you, again after the holiday toward the end of next week. As regards using C and C, because the horizontal plane between your lower level ceiling and upper level subfloor is not within the unit boundary, the association will require that you use C and C for that area. While the association will take responsibility for the repair, you will be charged for it because you are ultimately responsible for the damage. C and C will also provide a quote for the work upstairs. You are free to get competing bids and use your own contractor for that, but depending on the engineer's report and C and C's outline, the association may require certain specifications for that work. There's really no way to tell before getting the engineer out. I do not understand why the insurance company believes there may be mold behind the shower. The problem was diagnosed to be the shower entry ledge. The water is coming out the front glass door. If I were you, at a minimum, I would have a handyman cut a hole in the drywall now, at the base, just to the left of the shower door. If you suspect mold, it would then be removed, and it would aid in the drying process. I can recommend a handyman who can do this for you. Also, once again, we urge you to contact Dulles Glass, or someone like them, to see if they have any ideas that might prevent you from having to rip out the shower tile under the ledge. You need to wait for the engineer's report, and C&C's quote, before doing any work, but that would save time, and potentially money, and could be done now while you are waiting for the engineer. Thank you for listening.